Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Real People Live. I'm Zen Wild Kid, your host of Real People Live, and you're watching real live interviews with real live people who are here to share the gifts of their personal life experiences with you. You can catch these on YouTube, Facebook, Google Plus. Just uh, look up Real People Live. Today, I am very honored to introduce as our guest, Mr. Troy Casey, an incredible holistic health expert. I like to term him as a health guru, a um, world traveler, a male model. He's been down to the Amazon rainforest and done a lot of medical medicine research down there. He's going to talk to us about a lot of this stuff today. Troy, let me pass it off to you, man. Thanks a lot for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. And so, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be alive and to be talking to anybody. Excellent, man. Very nice. You're very nice. Uh, let's see. I noticed in some of your dialogue that I got with you online that uh, you have a concept of how to optimize personal performance. What can you tell us about that? Sure. High human, high human performance optimal health, um, you know, it's basically just operating the human operating system and knowing how to navigate uh, the world w that we've created. Uh, before we came online, we were talking about, you know, what's happening in the world, and that's, that's very important to me. And so if I'm going to stay balanced, harmonized, peaceful, in a loving state, then there's certain requirements my human animal uh, needs on a daily basis, nutrition, hydration, sunlight, loving relationships, breathing, movement, uh, sleep, etc. These are fundamental principles that I have to uh, get myself. And so, and we're also, we're navigating the noise pollution, the electromagnetic pollution, uh, and the pollution that's in, 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 in the world. So what I teach I, I, first of all, I can't just teach it. I have to exemplify it. I have to uh, live it. I have to be authentic in my, in my offering. And so I have to navigate, you know, what's going on. So I have a lot of tools and techniques that I've picked up for the last 26 years studying holistic nutrition, herbs, fasting, nutrition, um, uh, movement, exercise, um, shamanism in the rainforest. I've worked with indigenous healers for many years uh, all around the world and I've traveled the world, the sacred sites. And so um, I've picked up the ways to make me feel better so I can lead by example. And so if I'm bogged down by stress or metabolic processes from, from garbage food, then I'm not doing my best. I'm not giving my gifts. And so uh, this is what I help people understand if we just align with nature. We are nature. We're in harmony. We are part of nature. Human beings uh, are a part of all of that. And so um, if we align with the flow of life, we can heal many of our modern-day malades, the problems that we see so pervasive. One of the biggest alignment that I see is people having to know where their food comes from, soil, organic food builds red blood cells, regenerates your organs. You're replicating your cells every seven years. So what you feed your body replicates your eyeballs, your nasal hairs, your, your earlobes, your nervous system, your spinal cord. And so you keep regenerating your tissues. The body automatically heals itself if it has the proper environment and the proper materials to rebuild itself. And so I, I try to keep it, I don't, I don't like to get too esoteric. I like to keep it as simple as possible. And so I just tell people to eat real food, align with nature, get in nature, breathe deep, move your body, simple, simple stuff. And so that's human high performance. When you're doing that at the holistic level, level you're feeding your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual um, uh, bodies that you have in the third dimension. Each one requires nutrition. Then you can be balanced and go out in the world and give your gifts, your unique gifts that the creator gave you and what you're here to do, not blend into the cultural engineered element that is designed to, um, you know, be good for business. And, you know, the modern world is great. I live in it. I travel. I drive cars. I use technology. I don't want to say, you know, anything, but that's awesome. It's time to evolve the systems. 
It's as simple as that. And we can't evolve the systems if we have obesity, cancer, diabetes, and all these prevalent issues that we're seeing with human health statistics in the United States. So anyhow, I know that's a big run-on sentence, but my point, my point is, is human high performance really just comes down to aligning and harmonizing with the natural world that's already here to support us. So awesome. <laughs> how, would, how would somebody go about doing that if they don't have any techniques? You know, there's a lot of, lot of information available, but where would a good beginning point be for somebody who's yet to start to practice this? Where's a good start point for them? That's that's a great question. So it's very simple. We're in the we're in the age of uh, information. I say we're moved out of the age of information already. I believe we're moving into the age of authenticity, the age of implementation. There's plenty of theory. In fact, the reason I say the age of the information age is is over or approaching over is because all the information is on Google. You have access to YouTube videos. Go out and find a few teachers that are type in holistic health on your video. Uh, YouTube search engine, find holistic health. Look at the people that are living it at the highest level. Not, I have a diet paradigm like vegetarianism or paleo or vegan, and this is the solution to everything. Have someone that's at a holistic health level, maybe they have some years in, 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 in their life and they have some wisdom behind them, but no matter what, they're exemplifying a balanced life and they have the the musculature as an animal would have in the wild. Uh, and not that muscles and body types are always different, not that muscles are the telltale sign, but you can see when somebody's, the vibrance of their skin, the vibration of their voice and the, what their message is here to say, um, you know, just their health and vitality alone. If you can, if you can read energy, if, you're, if, you're, if your internal guidance system, if your apparatus, your enteric brain is operating at a higher level, you can feel what that vibration that you're getting off from that person. And you look in the mirror and you say, who, do, who am I and who do I want to be? And then you Google who you want to be and you see if you can learn from this person. The authenticity is right there. My mentor is Paul Check. He's 54 years old. He can deadlift 450 pounds. He's created the biggest programs in sports fitness in the last 30 years. And so, and he's a holistic health uh, teacher. He teaches about organic food. Oh, let's see. Is he living the lifestyle? What's he do? Oh, he does art. He's happy. He just had a kid. You know, uh, he's got a successful business. So we can learn from people like this. Elliot Hulse is another one. And there's plenty of people out there with good messages. So you align with them. Reverend Michael Beckwith is a great spiritual teacher. You know, watch him as much as you can. He's amazing. And so... Yeah. You align with a few people that's going to give you your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual, you know, nutrition that you're going to help, you know, find out where you can get the best information and if you want to emulate this person. And so um, on a physical or mental, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have to align with everyone, but I look at Donald Trump and I look like that guy's got some business element going on. You know, what is, you know, even you can call them whatever you want, but there's something to learn from there. You can learn from people's mistakes. You can learn from, and you learn right, right on YouTube. Uh, with health and fitness, you got to understand that most of the 20 year old kids are out there. First of all, they got high levels of testosterone and most of them are on steroids. So you really got to find out, you know, who in fitness doesn't equal health and health doesn't equal fitness and neither of them equate to spiritual fitness. So, you know, really go out there and look who you want to study with and who's exemplifying what you want to uh, uh, achieve at whatever level. Another good person that follow uh, a little bit, I don't know his whole lifestyle, but Laird Hamilton, he's one of the biggest, he's the biggest surfer in the world. He can surf the biggest waves. He lives a holistic lifestyle. You know, he does ice baths, he eats organic food. I think he's got a, a superfood supplement line as well. His wife's a, 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 a um, professional athlete or was. And, and they share my mentor, Paul Check, as his coach. Look at his lifestyle. You know, that guy's someone you could follow. You know, he's got his own coffee company. You know, you know, he's flipped on. So you can align with these people. Align with people that are eating real food. I just spent uh, uh, the night out with uh, my friends down in Orange County. And they cooked an organic, farmer-direct source meal with cultured vegetables and they had all the best stuff. I didn't have to ask them stupid questions like, does it have genetically engineered? Is it high quality? Where's your water from? 
It was like they just gave me the best, the best. You know, and that's the world we're going into is exactly what I believe and what I promote. And I've already seen the vision. So I'm just asking people to align with, with my vision. Clean air, water, and soil, and equitable systems for all mankind. We can differ on political and religious, you know, ideologies and beliefs. That's fine. But air, water, and soil is what makes life hospitable. And when you align yourself with those elements and go back to natural as much as possible, living again back navigating this modern day world of pollution and all sorts of interesting uh, complexity that we've created, get back to the simplicity and harmonize your system. And this is how we're going to change the world, change it from the inside out. I love it, man. You bring up a lot of great points, and I can tell this is a subject matter that you're very passionate about. I especially like your term of alignment <clears throat> and, and uh, aligning with the right uh, philosophy and people. We're aligning with you here today. Tell me a little bit more about holistic. Well, I like to I explain holistic health mental, emotional, physical, spiritual. So those are the four energy bodies that we have here on the third dimension on the surface of the earth. And so you've got the mental sphere, you know, you walk into, you know, psychic phenomenon is well known, whether you realize it or not, it's going on. So I just tell people, what does it feel like when you walk into a rock and roll stadium? Wow, that energy is so high, right? There's a, there's a certain mental energy, which is different from walking into Sunday service at your favorite spiritual center or Saturday service or Wednesday night satsang over at the meditation clinic, you know? So the bottom line is, is there's a different mental energy, right? And so and the same thing can be said when that rock stadium is empty. So you've got your mental body, then you've got your emotional body. These things are you know, our emotions come up and chemical reactions happen in the body. Advertising corporations, they know this very well and they use a lot of emotional imagery to get us to buy. And, and so it's a certain psychology because that's the way we're wired. And so, and, and we're wired for our sex hormones and our survival hormones. So fear and sex or fear and love is basically what's played uh, on the TV over and over again. And so to kind of program us and kind of get us by the old noogies, if you will. And so once we know that game, we don't have to play it. Nature's first law is self-preservation. Everyone wants to get laid at the chemical level. And so, or the biochemical level or whatever. Spreading seed is a natural inclination of being alive. And all the religions have squashed the whole sexual energy. You want to get into some power, you want to activate your own consciousness to a higher level, get into some tantra or some sexual kung fu. I mean, this stuff is, you know, you want to turn on your, your human being space suit, your Merkaba, your body temple. This is the temple of God, by the way. You want to turn it on at the higher level, start studying some sexual uh, uh, kung fu or some, some tantra. <clears throat> really understand it. And once you start practicing that stuff, you soon realize, oh, if I don't have a healthy body, I can't enjoy it that much. And so, again, this starts getting into some, some deeper layers, but at this point in human history, I mean, the internet's everywhere. We can learn anything. So you want to turn on your system, take care of it properly, harmonize it, and, uh, you know, I would research your own sexual energy. It's the creative life force that we have, the ability to create. So I think I got off topic, though, didn't I? Not at all, man. Not at all. This is this is all you today. Um, brilliant. Uh, it's, it's interesting how often these talks do come back to that sacred life energy and the sexual energy. What uh, you I mean? You're in great shape, man. I really like your hashtag uh, pound ripped at fifty. What puts you on this path? I mean, were you always here from a child, or or what what led you on this journey of discovery to, to this wealth of information that you have? Yes, well, journey journey to self love ultimately. So, I um, I've got an interesting background. I've been on my own since I was fourteen. I was incarcerated as a youth. Uh, luckily, I did time before I turned eighteen, and so um, then I got out. I finished school by myself. I put myself through school. Um, then I quit school to start a career in modeling, and I lived in Milan, and. You know, I grew up as an American. I ate Captain Crunch, Pop-Tarts, McDonald's. 
I mean, my mom made home cooked meals, of course. However, that was the 70s. We had TV dinners. We had all sorts of stuff, vaccines, antibiotics. I remember I had serious infections after my vaccines. It's all in my baby book. And then I've had gut issues, you know, subsequently. Now, I, I don't know the direct correlation. All I know is I've had digestive issues uh, since I was younger. And when I got to Milan, I didn't know anything about food. Captain Crunch and Pop-Tarts was, uh, you know, my, you know, the American diet. And so, so I had to educate myself. And, you know, many years later, uh, I was able to pinpoint the gluten sensitivity. I understood pasteurized dairy straight out of the gate. I really got into fresh fruits and vegetables and started going to the farmer's market in Italy, which farmer's markets in Italy, they're everywhere every day, basically. And so, um, then I came home to the United States and bought a juicer and started uh, juice cleansing and I was researching herbs and I would try herbs. And uh, because my digestion was off, sometimes I would bloat. So I read about dandelion, which was a diuretic. It cleans out your liver. And I dieted that plant. I probably dieted that plant for a good 10 or 15 years, especially during my rock star phase. I did a bunch of Versace campaigns and started drinking and partying really hardcore which was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, I took dandelion almost every day. And uh, I think that's one of the things that helped my liver. And so, so I started studying, you know, that stuff 26 years ago. And then I have, I've had a career in front of the camera. I've been in front of the camera for 26, 20, 27 years now. And uh, um, I needed to know how to look and feel my best on camera. I mean, the camera doesn't hide your defects. You know, so I got really hip to optimizing my own system, at least for photo shoots at the bare minimum. And I noticed that cleanse and detoxification, liver flushes, colon cleanses, these things really helped. They got rid of inflammation, uh, joint pain, any kind of, uh, you know, I basically looked great, rejuvenated my skin. So I got into the habit of cleansing and detoxing and internal purification on a regular basis a few times a year. And so fast forward 26 years, uh, you know, I've got this campaign called hashtag ripped at 50 and it's really about what's possible. It's not about my bodybuilding prowess or even my athletic prowess. I'm just, my thing is just to stay balanced, moving, stability, mobility, you know, being able to move my body completely as much as I can. I got a kink in my shoulder and one in my knee and you know, I'm like everybody else. I've got my own issues, but my objective is just to keep moving for the rest of my life. I need my apparatus to, to walk on the physical plane. And so, um, so, so had the rock star phase in, in my modeling career. And then I had to sober up. I moved to Los Angeles to start an acting career. Um, and, um, uh, I realized I couldn't do that if I was still partying. So I cleaned up my life. I started practicing Vipassana meditation. I did 11 courses of Vipassana and silence studied with SN Goenka. I mean, that was really good medicine for my nervous system and a lot of the healing of my own tra childhood traumas and, you know, whatever, uh, stories we tell ourselves. And so, uh, I did six years of that. And that really helped me sober up and just really get deep into my life. And then I started working with Maori shaman from New Zealand. They do very powerful uh, shamanic body work. They wake you up quick, man, when they step on your nerve centers and your calves and inside, the, inside your, uh, your uh, uh, thighs and, oh man, they do some magic. And so, um, and then I started working with an herbal company in the Amazon. I started researching their plants, loved them. They totally woke me up to a higher level of consciousness. The Vipassana meditation helped me. The Maori helped me. Then I started working in the Amazon, and, and then I started going down there and doing ayahuasca, and I had my own awakening on that. So there was levels of my own awakening. Um, I think all this growing up uh, as a kid on the street really gave me a certain level of an awareness. Um, even when I was unconscious, I was still aware of my surroundings. And now that I've had, you know, a handful of awakenings, I realize, oh my God, <laughs> we all live on planet Earth and we're, you know, basically trashing the place. <laughs> and if these other people aren't going to solve the problem, then I've got a responsibility to do. 
So I came out of the Amazon and, and I had a vision when I was down there for Certified Health Nut and everything I'm doing on, online right now. And uh, I came out of the Amazon and I had all this exotic footage and I started posting it up on YouTube and I got a lot of viral content for ayahuasca. Um, this was early on. I still get a lot of attention on my ayahuasca videos. Uh, people watch them and go down to the center that I work with in Peru uh, within a week. So. Anyways, that was a rambling a little bit, but that's basically my history. And then I got married, had children, and that's my new spiritual running track. That's my church right there. Be the best father and the best husband I can be. And let me tell you, it's not easy in the modern world trying to do all the things, you know, do the dance, man. The economy's like, hey, motherfuckers, make a shitload of money or you're going to, you know, it's like that whole fear. You know, you watch movies like uh, The Big Short with Brad Pitt that just came out and Steve Carell all on the housing crisis in 2008. People don't realize their money's being siphoned off from them. They're playing manipulation games. And I'm not a like conspiracy theorist, like they're over there. We're one species. When we look at other, that is some reflection of us, whether it's a deep, dark, you know, skeleton in the closet, but that's the skeleton in the, in the collective consciousness of human beings. and like the Hawaiian Hopoono or uh, whatever that's called, we gotta, we gotta heal that stuff inside of ourselves. At least that's a good story that resonates with me. And so, so I'm here to just really flip on the human being as above, so below. The more we take care of ourselves and elevate our own consciousness, by natural self-correction, self-corrector selector, we will, automatically treat the earth with more respect, vote with our dollars, drive less, advocate getting off oil, advocate getting off uh, fake currencies that are creating Syrian and Libya and Iraq and Afghanistan and anybody that doesn't want to play with the Federal Reserve globalist type of game. And so, and this is all just a huge awakening. We've got forced uh, vaccinations trying to come online here in California, not, not forced, but mandatory. And, you know, they start inching one thing to the next. They're doing these false flag uh, mass shootings everywhere um, that are black ops, just like 9-11, but just a little bit differently. Um, you know, I encourage everyone to look deeply at that. Uh, you know, is it, is it what it's being said over the TV? You know, it sounds like a lot of manipulation. And so the bottom line is it's time to wake up or we can expect more. So the vaccines goes against uh, First Amendment. You got religious rights, freedom of speech. Um, and then and then the the uh, the mass shootings, they're trying to go after the guns. And the, I, I don't own a gun. I'm not I'm, I, I, it's not my consciousness. However, I do like the sacred document known as the Constitution of the United States of America and the right to bear arms against tyrannical governments. I think that's cool. And I think they're trying to inch towards those things. At the same time, they're just putting fucking rubbish in the, in the food, in the soil, in the air. So excuse my French, but, you know, it's Fourth of July weekend. This is, you know, land of the free, home of the brave. It's time to brave up, man up, cowboy up. If you're a human being and you know what's going on, get it out of your vocal cords, man. Because the future of humanity is, um, is, is, is us. It's what we say. A small group of people have always changed the world, always. Small group, even one mind can get out there and change the world. Gandhi, Einstein, Steve Jobs, Wright Brothers. So my big thing is, Get healthy first, pay attention to that, because it automatically takes care of the macro, the micro takes care of the macro, as above, so below. And then we can create a world that the ecosystem is still going to support us. The environment is still gonna support us. Instead of shitting in the oceans, Fukushima, Gulf spill, Porter Ranch, all the water degradation, what the stuff we're doing in the Amazon. Look, I worked in the Amazon, I saw it, our trees, the rainforest going right down the river tributaries, going into the cities, mountains of sawdust, mountains of sawdust. So I'm flipped on, I'm switched on for a reason. If I don't get my act together and activate my brothers and sisters, then what world am I leaving for my children? My own genetic expression.
You bring up a lot of good points. This is very empowering, and I really appreciate your message with us. Um, it sounds like you're a huge advocate of self mastery as a way, as a way, as initial way to engage with what's going on outside of us and take effect on what's going on outside of us. What is, what do you perceive as the greatest challenge to that right now? There's a, there, obviously, there's a lot going on. What do you think the greatest challenge? Okay, let's get on this because this is what we were on when we were talking before we started recording. So I say the challenge is actually the tool that's waking us up. The mandatory vaccines and they're trying to squash this vaxxed movie, that's getting everybody aware that putting pig viruses in aborted fetal tissue and formaldehyde and heavy metals might not be the most optimal choice if you're looking for human high performance or any other margin of health or sidestep the risk of these children that are completely maimed, killed, brain damage, autism. I don't know if autism is directly provable, but let me tell you, there's a lot of women out there that go, look what it did to my kid. This is a big deal. And there's been billions of dollars of, of, of uh, vaccine injury cases that have been paid out. Look on the Bayer's website. This is government document, $3 billion plus of brain damage and, ch and killed children. So my point is the digital stress, the, the governmental idiocy that's clearly uh, been purchased by the corporations that are manipulating legislation to allow these things to go through. We're also American military, the American military industrial complex is being utilized by the globalists to go after natural resources. There's two books that I recommend uh, reading on this exact conversation that we started earlier and now. One is Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. The way of the world is simple, guys. The IMF and the World Bank goes into third world countries and gives loans. Then they go in, they build dams, infrastructure, electricity lines, and, and, and roads. Bechtel and Halliburton get these, uh, these contracts, these government contracts. So it's all de by design. Then they go to the governments, Ecuador, or Peru, or you know, uh, uh, Sudan, uh, you know, wherever they want the natural. Then they say, "Okay, pay us back your loans." Oh, you can't pay back the loan? That's fine. We want your natural resources, and we want your people to pull it out of the earth at a slave wage. And oh, you don't pay? Oh, you don't want to pay? You want to play with us? Oh, that's fine. Let's send some mercenaries over there and create a coup d'etat. What do you think happened in Libya? You create a coup d'etat, you destabilize the area, and then, of course, NATO and the American military has to go in and be the solution. Or uh, what they'll do is um, they'll bring in one of, the, one of the economic hitmen. They don't play games. They might even assassinate them, which happened on John Perkins' watch uh, in Chile and in Ecuador and in Panama with Noriega. So the thing is, the way of the world is pretty simple, and most people know this because of the internet. So, so then what's, what happens, you know, if people don't play game outright, then we send in the American military. And that's what happened in Afghanistan, that's what's happening in Syria, and that's what happened in Iraq. That's about oil, guys. So, okay, so let's go to John Perkins' other book, which I like a lot uh, more because it, take, it shows us a way to take it to the next level. He spent many years before working for the World Bank uh, in Peru with the Peace Corps, and he started drinking ayahuasca and working with shamans years before. So after he quit the World Bank, he went back to the Amazon to work with the, the shamans and the sacred medicines, and he had an awakening. He wrote a book called Shape Shifting, to shape the conduits of commerce and media so they, the channels work, media and commerce they function. All we have to do is flip the script and put life affirmative messages down those pipelines. Holistic messages, um, everything I'm doing with Certified Health Nut, which is basically branding out uh, health as cool and sexy, which is Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Hollywood elements that have been, that have been done since the beginning of media. So, so we're, do, we're playing the same psychological uh, game with that. Uh, sexy body, making healthy cool, et cetera, et cetera. 
And you do the same thing on the media and you vote with your dollars. Until we change the money system, we vote with our dollars. We, we support organic companies, organic farmers. We support our purchases with the things that are good for our human body, natural soaps. Uh, a lot of these companies already do fair trade. They're working on other projects. They're, they're, they're funding other nonprofits. And so that's what we do is we align our buying power and we advocate these things. The, the, the creation principle is very simple. Thought, word, action manifests in the, in the flesh. We are, we are receivers for information. That's how Beethoven, Bach, Da Vinci, um, um, you know, any great minds, Tesla, they download this information and then they speak it into existence. They put some action behind it. And lo and behold, we have the Wright brothers flying like an eagle from LAX or Santa Monica Airport right in front of my face every minute. Why? Because they had an idea. And this is how we're going to change the world. If, if, if you don't have the ideas aligned with my vision, clean air, water, and soil, equitable systems for all mankind in my lifetime, boom. Or just align with, we've always evolved. We have to evolve beyond oil. We, have to, we can evolve beyond war. We can evolve beyond money. And we don't have to fight the existing systems, as Buckminster Fuller said. I recommend anybody out there that doesn't know who that man's name is, research Bucky Fuller. And, and, and you know, he said, you don't fight the existing systems. You go over here and you create the world that you want to see and you live in it. And everybody else is going to be left behind. They're not going to be in, they're not going to be keeping up with the Joneses. They're not going to be part of the popular people. And let me tell you, this is a popularity game. President Obama became president with a half billion dollars. With a half billion dollars, I can become president of planet Earth. Or better yet, we can all become president of planet Earth just by taking care of your microcosmic element right here. It automatically represents the outside. That's if we had more people doing that, it would naturally change. Fantastic. Beautiful, man. I see more and more people getting on board with that every day. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Did I tie that all together or did I get lost in the ethers? The, qu the question was about uh, the greatest challenge and what I heard from you was to meet that challenge and to utilize that challenge as an opportunity for this growth, for this per transformation, this positive transformation. Not to resist the challenge, not to hide from the challenge, but to... Go ahead. So the thing, so the so here's here's the thing, it's like the uh, the concrete on the shoot of grass. The oppression's going to wake us up anyways. This is our soul contract. We have contracted for this time. This is in the Vedic scriptures. They talk about the cosmic joke. This is God taking the red pill or the blue pill and going, oh yeah, I forgot I took the red pill or the blue pill or whatever. You, you get what I'm saying? We, the oppression will awaken the human spirit. By, by design, the, the, the yin-yang symbol, you know, if you're too yanged out, which we are now, it's going to have to collapse into the yin eventually. And so, so I say bring on the difficulties. If you're paying attention to astro, astro, astrology in the last five months or so, we've had like five major planets out of uh, in, in retrograde, which has never happened in like the recorded – you know, history or whatever. It's big stuff. We're going through the 2012 interchange. We're, com we're coming out of it. I remember going into 2012, everything was speeding up. I've realized I've felt it slow down now and start getting back. It's still going fast, but it's, it's slowing down. So this digital stress, eventually I'm going to throw my fucking phone away. I swear to God, man. Just because we can't handle it. I'm running my businesses now with on this fake currency off my social media. I need organic food. I've got to be somewhat successful just to make sure that my organism can fly in this modern world. And look, there's plenty of refugee camps in Ethiopia. You want destitution? It's alive and well on this planet. And so I get this is another part of the human high performance that I get to navigate. And I'm walking between both worlds, right? That's the idea of shape-shifting. So that's what John Perkins writes about. We're, we're here in the modern world, and, and we want to go into this world. And so, you know, it's, it's navigating these two terrains, you know, coming down the pipeline. And so, um, 
because we're ushering in this other world. And so we're shape-shifting the whole, you know, I say the quantum leap is going to happen and things are just going to change. People say, oh, 50 years. I work with a ton of environmentalists or I'm connected to them, you know. People, you know, I have a big conversation around oil and they're thinking, it's going to take a long time. We don't have a long time. Anybody look at environmental statistics? We don't have a long time. It must happen quickly. And technology is expanding, and anybody who wants to destroy the world will be able to have access through 3D printing and open source blueprinting. So the only way to go is to upgrade the consciousness. Human family, human species, Earth is our spaceship, and we better take care of it, or it will achoo the human being species off. So, and I've seen a vision that doesn't happen. I see more of a vision like that poster behind you of those pyramids and the light. The light is here to come to roost on this planet. Amen to that, brother. We love the light. Have you had any uh, experiences like with with light or with the God consciousness or something like that? Maybe via ayahuasca or watching the birth of your children or something like that? Any kind of supernatural experiences that you'd like to discuss with us? Um, let's see. Well, I have a pretty strong mind and part of my use of sacred medicines, entheogens, um, in the past has been to really dislodge that. All my, sh this body work I did with the Maori, the mental lobotomies I did with med meditation has been really to learn to let go of my super strong mind. Um, and so uh, I had, in ayahuasca ceremonies working in the Amazon, I, uh, I don't have these real like, you know, losing my body and flying all around the universe and talking to God or seeing the, seeing the boogeyman. I've seen some, you know, interesting stuff in my conscious field, but I've never just completely let go. That's just my mind. Everybody's different. But I get visions know uh to me as knowings they come right into my heart and i've had i had you know three profound visions one was of my family when i was not married the spirit of my daughter came to me uh the other one was certified health nut which was amalgamation of my on-camera career i was doing stand-up comedy at the time and um um and my natural medicine studies and so that combined a certified health nut that was a vision and that humanity makes it through this, um, this very challenging, opportunistic time that we're living in. And so uh, statistically, if you look at it, it doesn't look like we're going to make it. However, I've seen the vision. We do make it. And so it's just I'm watching those, all three of those unfold. So that's my kind of experience, experience with the unseen, if you will. Um, I feel I've got some good guides with me. Um, I've had some big emotional turmoil during this astrological phase in 2016. Actually, the last five years have been quite soul-dredging, tumultuous times, and I've used that as my spiritual fodder, my spiritual awakening more than sacred medicines. I haven't been to the Amazon in four years drinking ayahuasca. So, um, you know, I use all the information that I got in the ceremonies to now transform my own life, integrate, because remember we're moving into the age of authenticity, so I've had to integrate my own awakening experience, my own understanding, and be able to communicate it in a way that it reaches the audience that's out there. I have a tendency, I can talk and go on many different levels. My message has to be coherent and cogent to the people that I'm delivering it to. And so I try and chunk it down. I know that your audience might be on a different level of consciousness. But when I go out into the public and I talk to, um, uh, you know, people that are eating commercial food, et cetera, et cetera, I chunk it down and I make it super simple. Um, so w what was the question again? Because I want to make sure that I stay on point. You did. The question was about the supernatural, anything like with the light or with the God consciousness. And you mentioned that you had those three – those three visions and you place them kind of in your heart chakra. That was really beautiful. 
Uh, and I really appreciate the compliment you gave to my audience as far as mentioning that they're probably on a, a high level of consciousness, man. And the intensity and, and authenticity of your message is definitely going to be re well received. I can guarantee you that, man. Yeah, so I can't really speak of it. My wife has had a Jesus Christ experience. She was praying a lot. She was brought up Christian, and uh, Jesus came to her in a you know very vivid experience. And so, um, and she's an amazing woman. But let me tell you, the modern world creates a lot of stress in people's lives. We had black mold exposure. We moved seven times with a new family. I had some hiccups in my in my in my businesses, uh, and then building. <clears throat> Building a global brand, I mean, with not having any business knowledge, um, that's been very interesting. So um, for me, it's all spiritual fodder. And, you know, somebody's got to navigate the terrain before the rest of the collective can rise up. And I'm not the only one. I mean, God, that's why I love all the movements. Certified Health Nuts, great. I partnered with David Sandoval and his organic wheatgrass company. Uh, he's branding out, uh, making healthy cool. Um, Paul Check has got 10,000 holistic students worldwide, high-level sports fitness people. Uh, the yoga movements, obviously yoga has been extremely popularized since uh, the last 20 years, since moving to L.A. So the, the Burning Man situation, you know, people are awakening and unifying on one level or another at the same time where the vaccines, the genetically engineered foods, um, you know, the, the, the mass shootings, the, the terrorism, all these things are getting magnified. We have to change. We, we have to change. And we've evolved so quickly because of this. You've got to remember all those people in the Middle East before oil, they were just living their tribal nature, as were the people in the Amazon. You would come from tribal people. And so, you know, I'm not trying to make people right, wrong, or the otherwise, but terrorism is a sold concept. You know, we have to look at our own, you know, state-derived terrorism and what we're doing to other people in the world. You know, totally. bombing the crap out of people. Agreed, man. Agreed. And there's some uh, karma that goes with that. But, you know, here we are. We've kind of got, you've already mentioned it, we have a foot in two worlds right now. This old paradigm that we're leaving and that's non-sustainable and this new paradigm that's part of your vision and part of many people's vision, this new paradigm that we're definitely, that is sustainable and we're definitely achieving and aligning with, to use your word again. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the brand of you though. I got turned on to you with uh, a live video. I think you were in uh, England at the time. You were, you were given a seminar or a speak in England about health. And then I also got turned on to you the other day, man, when you were at a, um, at a rally for immunization on this immunization subject. Can you tell me a little bit about what you were doing over in Europe about a month ago and then about this uh, anti-immunization thing that's going on in California right now? Would you like to talk speak about those? Yes. And so... Um, um, the vaccine thing is about pro uh, awareness, really, and choice. And uh, um, they passed a law in California last year. They're encroaching on uh, human rights. So Nuremberg, in the Nuremberg trial in The Hague after the Nazis, um, they said mandatory medical procedures, uh, that's against human rights. So that's already been documented. And what they did was, excuse me, SB 277 basically mandates that you must have, uh, children must be vaccinated. Previously, we could have religious exemptions, which is part of the constitutional, uh, you know, rights. And so the fact of the matter is uh, people are protesting that because there's been a lot of vaccine uh, injuries, a lot of documentation. And vaccines have neither been proven safe nor effective in double-blind clinical studies. You know, real uh, honest and integrity science, not research bias. And so, so again, vaccines are not proven safe nor effective, and they have a ton of side effects if you read the inserts. So uh, women, mothers, they want the choice because their friends, you know, children have been injured or you know, they've died after being vaccinated. And so we want the choice. And that's what that was all about. And there's a movie called Vaxxed out there. 
uh, Del Bigtree was a producer on the television show The Doctors. So he's an investigative journalist, really smart guy. And uh, he was asked to do this movie on the CDC whistleblower. In 2004, uh, the CDC had over 10,000 documents, 10,000 pages of documents correlating uh, a rise in autism after the MMR vaccine. Um, this is in 2004. 263% um, higher incidence of autism in African American boys. So this is big news and they threw it in the garbage. They buried it. And in 2014, 10 years later, the, the scientists working at the CDC came out as a whistleblower. This is all brand new, but it's buried in, in the media. And so they did a movie on this. Uh, and uh, so they're trying to repeal the SB 277 law uh, that was passed, trying to mandate if you go to California public schools or any schools. So basically, you have to homeschool if you're not going to get vaccinated. And as you know, well know in the economy, the way the economy is set up right now, both men and women have to work. And so if you want to, you know, if you want to basically live and pay rent, et cetera, um, uh, is, is, and so, you know, I grew up in the 70s. That didn't start after they, you know, started burning the bras and, you know, women's rights. That was just a CIA, you know, coup d'etat operative to get the women into the workforce. You know, maybe that's a little too out there conspiratorial, but look it up. <laughs> it's got credence. And so uh, the fact of the matter is, I don't want to get too cuckoo on this, but it's there, you know, they helped Gloria Steinem and, you know, her get out the, you know, feminist movement and stuff. Yeah, if women want to work, great. But you know what? I got kids. The kids need to be with their mother. And there's some real chemical bond that happens. Mom, mom knows what's right for the children. And so, and that's all been, you know, separated, divide and conquer. Women aren't doing that now. They're not taking care of the children. They're giving them out to these public schools, school in the industrial age school system. I got news for people. The industrial age is over with. So the fact of the matter is, and then the schools are feeding them garbage food and they're teaching them nonsense that's not even usable. Um, my children go to Waldorf. And so Rudolf Steiner was a living master and he figured out, you know, how the spiritual being comes into the earth plane and how to honor that and how to really... Uh, flip on the operating system. Everything that I teach, you know, I learned from my children going to Waldorf school. So, so the vaccine thing, you know, is um, really just about human rights and reclaiming our human rights and our human sovereignty. You know, if I don't want anybody's pig viruses and aborted fetal tissue in me, don't I have the right to say no? You know, especially if it might have a damage on my heart. Or my, or my, or my, or, or my, you know, my, my body. I don't, I don't want that, and I don't want your garbage food and all these, these other things. You know, I want the choice, and that's what that's all about. Um, when I went to the UK a couple of weeks ago, I only have one conversation. This is pretty much the conversation. We can go off and digress on different areas, but the fact of the matter is, is this is the only conversation you know I have. So I went out to uh, the UK and Britain. Uh, Scotland, Wales, and, and England uh, for uh, to teach holistic health and really my message and the message of awakening, the message of taking care of your body, the message of nutrition, of cleanse and detox. Um, and I have a large uh, sports fitness team that I've aligned with, a lot of my Czech colleagues, my sports fitness people, as well as homeopaths and naturopaths, uh, holistic vets, uh, yoga instructors. Um, and so I have a big team. I, last two years, I've gone over there, and we've done very dynamic presentations. And I work with a company that distributes organic wheatgrass, and we have a ten-day cleanse. So I go over there, and I promote health and consciousness, and I build my my distribution channels for the wheatgrass. And so, uh, basically, if people want to be aligned with something bigger, they want to also make money online because many people have online businesses now and they need to monetize it some way. So we offer uh, a, a distribution model where we give them their own website and their own shopping cart, and the company takes care of all of that, and we distribute very high quality organic wheatgrass that we've been growing. We've been growing on uh, organic 
farmland in Utah for 24 years. We've been manufacturing uh, uh, very high quality herbal and, and uh, uh, green foods products. So I had 11 uh, venues and I'm learning a lot in marketing and, and uh, how the psychology of the mind works and I put together a PowerPoint this year. Last year, you know, I prefer to do the old Indian way, which is just download the information and really share from the heart, which is great and it has its own dynamism. Um, but I learned some psychological and marketing tools that uh, basically is used by all marketing. It works. It really inspires people to use images and uh, emotions. I use a lot of my own nature pictures in the Amazon. Uh, camping in Yosemite in the Grand Canyon with my children. So really inspiring images of life on earth. And uh, people love it, man. It's my second tour in, in, in a year and I post some of the live videos up on, um, on my Facebook page. Uh, the thing is, is, is uh, come see me live if you can. You know, we're working on getting all my business systems all up and running so I can be it more systematic. Usually I'm just pretty intuitive. I spoke yesterday down at the Spiritual Center in Laguna Beach, um, but I filmed a lot. There's a lot on the internet as well, uh, but we're ramping that up. We're getting out the messages out uh, to a much larger audience. So I encourage everyone to stay tuned to Certified Health Nut and come out to one of my live presentations, seminars eventually. I'll be working with other people in the field, other inspirational uh, uh, people that have a lot to offer. For example, my friend who, uh, who had a heart transplant and almost died about six or seven times in the last two years. So I figure he's got a good outlook on life, maybe in a closer connection to God because <laughs> he's faced death so much. You can find the video I did with him last year on death and dying with Jimmy Franzo on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I just did uh, an interview with him last week. Now he has an, um, somebody's new heart in him and he's in the hospital right now too. So He's facing death his eighth time in a row. <laughs> the cat has nine lives. Does he have more? You know, we ask the deep questions on that because not everybody faces, you know, death every day. We're, we're all dying. So are we living a life worth living? And usually a death scare really helps us upgrade the systems on that. I so, can say amen to that, man. I, uh, I did die. And that's definitely why I'm here doing what I'm doing today. I, uh, I took a car 45 feet off a cliff, off a mountain, man, and it wasn't six inches on that vehicle that wasn't ripped apart, crushed. And I totally left this state of being. I left my human body, and I was, uh, I was one with what I consider to be the God consciousness, man, an incredibly intelligent uh, consciousness that looked like pearl juice kind of the only way to describe it. When I looked down to see my body, I, I had no arms or legs. I had no physical body, but I was part of, I was not disconnected from this beautiful swirling uh, pearl juice. And the only thing that it emanated was, and there's not one word in our English language that says it. So I'm going to say it in two words. The only thing this power, this incredibly powerful consciousness emanated was a complete feeling and sense of unconditional love and absolute truth at the same time it so it did it was that all-knowing all-loving consciousness and i was not suffering from the illusion of separation at the time i was a part of it and it was a really beautiful experience it totally altered and shifted my life away from being kind of a capitalist and a real estate developer and moving into this promise that i made myself in that state that if I ever got back down to this planet, the only thing I would focus on is making that love. And uh, I think there's a myriad of ways to make that love. Uh, smile at a stranger, breaking bread and creating food with our friends, even petting a cat or sitting by the river are moments that we absolutely can get in touch with that state of love. And on a molecular level, because I truly believe that this was an energy state on a molecular level, an atomic level, I believe that we can manifest that and change some of this gray matter that's that's around us and all the time and, and alter that gray matter and bring it up to a higher resonance where it vibrates on a higher frequency. And one and I don't think it alters once it's in that state, man. I think that's almost like a state of alpha to omega permanence, man. So that's been my experience. Thanks for letting me drop that in. I'm going to well, say I mean, some. Uh, 
But well, yeah, one second there though. You basically, so you had the one ex experience that I was talking that I necessarily haven't really had on, on that level explained that you did, but you just brought in what I said. You said the same thing. And this is the quantum leap that we're headed for. Once enough people get a taste of this, we anchor that in. And at the atomic level, absolutely. And bringing it back to human high performance, I studied with Montauk Chia. He's the, he's the uh, leading Taoist master, sexual kung fu guy. And he says all the heavy metals and the, the garbage in the environment is creating chaos at the atomic level. And one of the antidotes is Tai Chi, Qi Gong, or just any kind of ways to activate your consciousness. And you just basically... That's what I'm saying. It's coming into a singularity of consciousness. How it's going to happen, I don't know how, how it's going to happen, but just like you said, that's exactly what I'm saying. So it's coming. It's there, are many, there are many paths up this mountain, Troy. And, uh, you know, one thing that I want to share, I, I feel, I feel uh, a message to share this, is that this is not mandatory for us. This is an opportunity. Right. We have this blessing in this physical state as – that's a, our vehicle to our spiritual bodies. Nobody's forcing this on us. This, but we can work with this. It's a choice. It's a, it's a beautiful and brilliant choice. And we receive a lot by making this decision to empower our bodies, to be kind and loving to our environment and our society and our community. But that God consciousness, what I call God consciousness, loves us so much that it's still going to love us whether we're eating those McDonald's burgers or not. It's just that for us in this present state, for us to love ourselves more, we need to drop those burgers, man, and do some of that wheatgrass that you just showed us because on that molecular frequency, that atomic level that you just re referenced and I referenced, that's how we're going to be more, more able, more aware and more purified and detoxified, man, to be able to receive that self-love. Because when I have that self-love, I can share it with you. I sense that you have a lot of self-love through your life experiences and not all of them being good, necessarily good or happy. But that's how we grow. You talked about meeting the challenge. And once we get there, man, it is something that we are going to share with, with others. But uh, we have to share it with ourselves first, man, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this is the unconditional love. Paul Check explains this like a rock star. You know, that's how he defines God is unconditional love. And most people are like, well, why, you know, why the pain? Well, if you have any, you know, understanding of life on earth, it's yin and yang, masculine and feminine. You don't know one without knowing the other. You read the Tibetan book of living and dying. Uh, you know, they, they say you don't know the the, the heights of joy until you've reached the depths of pain. And so the bottom line is, is, you know, we're, we're heading into this rebalancing element. God consciousness, anchoring that in unconditional love. Well, we have to know the opposite of that to anchor that in, or at least experience it in this spiritual realm. And so, um, it comes down to choice and utilizing the the creation principle the power imbued to the human being the ability to create we can create peace on earth we're already creating crappy food and war on countries with natural resources with a fossil fuel that's polluting and choking off the the, the life support systems on earth we created hell on earth so you know, and don't get me wrong, I still enjoy my life. I swim in the dirty oceans and, and, you know, do as best I can. The fact of the matter is we can just flip that coin right over. Let's build sacred geometry, Merkabahs, and, and, and real estate. Talk about real estate development. How about putting crystals in buildings and making them, you know, uh, uh, intertwine with the environment? You know, I work with uh, lead platinum architects and stuff like that. It all can be done. The technology is here. Let's just flip that script around and build food forests and permaculture, you know, uh, plantations. We don't have to use herbicides and pesticides and all these things. Just upgrade the natural consciousness. We practice the forms of biomimicry and, and you know, permaculture. We get into the gift economy. We, we get access free energy. Free energy already exists. Just harness the, the power of the sun, et cetera, et cetera. These things will, these things will free us free us. And we've had to create the opposite, which is unconditional love. There's no conditions. 
Unconditional love is there, there's no condition. God says, do whatever the hell you want. And now you have choice. Oh, you don't want that? <laughs> Choose something new. Absolutely. Simple. Absolutely, man. The incentives are definitely there for our culture and our society, but there is also a resistant force that I kind of consider this slave trading force that is threatened by us becoming awake. I don't know how or where to pinpoint that. I know that I have had some of that inside myself that I've had to purge out, but I also know there's a lot of damn good people on this planet, very powerful people like yourself, who are fully incentivized to to move and to create that, that new paradigm. I mean, if we all took a day off work, man, and went and laid out in the sun and made love and drank some wheatgrass and some pure water without chlorine and fluoride in it, we're there, dude. We are there in that moment and in that space. So I, I, don't, I don't like that contradictory force and I'm not gonna support it. I don't support it with my dollars. I don't support it with my lifestyle. I think we're grown up enough and graduated enough to move out of that. I think it's social responsibility not to participate in that shit, man, and to move away from that. And I know that's what we're doing, but I also recognize that there's still something going on with those bombs and that other stuff. I don't want to focus too much energy down that rabbit hole because it's balance. It's, it's balance. And, and here's the thing with the whole spiritualism in the, in the new age community. They don't want to talk about negativity. So, hey, guys, there's a balance. Here's where we're at, and it's time to upgrade the system. Oh, innovation, entrepreneurial consciousness, success consciousness, creation principles, Wright Brothers, Steve Jobs. We've always changed the world. It's just time to dream in the new ideas. But why do we need new ideas? Well, oil's contaminating the earth with, on many different levels. Here's 10 examples. Oh, okay, it's cutting down the rainforest. It's, it's, it's contaminating the, the, the Gulf. It's starting wars in, in Libya, et cetera. And, you know, oh, if everything's working so well, why do I have 4,000 Iraq, Iraqi veterans in Santa Monica pulling in on all our tax dollars and the resources of the city of Santa Monica? We've got to pay for that in one way, shape, or form. Those are our brothers and sisters wasting away with alcohol because they can't process the PTSD and the emotions they've got in those wars. So this stuff comes home to roost. We're, we're contaminating the food. The Americans are 70% obese. So you don't want to look at that. Well, you got to look at that if you want a better world. Otherwise, the problems, the 70% obesity, which is exponentiating, is going to come home to your house to roost because the GMOs and the Monsantos are going to dominate the, the, the soil and, and, and the water and all these things. So the only choice is to wake up. You still have to talk about this stuff. Buy organic food. You want to be healthy? You ripped it 50 campaign that I have or whatever. You want a sexy body? Nature's first law is self-preservation. You want to get rid of aches and pains? You want to, you know, attract the opposite sex? Satisfy sexual desires? We all have these inside of us. Be healthy. Be strong. Be clear. Protect the future of the family. You know, uh, keep up with the Joneses. Be popular. All these things. Be healthy. Just be healthy. Be vibrant and healthy. You'll change the world. Poof. Just like that. I totally agree with you. I don't do a spiritual bypass and I don't believe in doing the spiritual bypass, but there are a lot, I do, I do like what you said about Bucky Fuller and manifesting and changing when you turned your back on the camera to build that new world. I only possess a finite amount of energy and that's where I like to be. I like to be a solution provider. I know that you've provided a lot of solutions here and you've mentioned them today. Uh, but I also want to say, man, at the same time, I feel a little, I feel a little bit like, you know, I put oil, I put gas in my car to get here today to be able to do this. I don't necessarily love that, you know? I mean, so I feel like I'm a little bit co contributory to the negative shit at the same time. I get you. And here's what I tell people. You know, I travel a lot. I got to eat whatever's available sometimes. Neurosis is a mental disorder. Mental, emotional, and physical health is holistic health. So if you're obsessing of, you know, all the pro that's not going to get us to the solutions. We have to start where we're at. If I disconnect from the money system because I know it's uh, got its own fraud and corruption to it, you know, how am I going to function in this world? There's plenty of people that are living homeless. I came from Santa Ana this morning in Orange County. There was a whole homeless camp underneath freeways in, 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 in Santa Ana today. It's like we've got our own shanty towns. So we still got to function in this world. And so... You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So 
I, how do I get to, you know, the UK? Well, I've got to fly on a plane that uses jet fuel, you know, and where does the jet fuel come from? It comes from barrels of oil and we extract that with wars. So yeah, of course. So we're all part of the problem. Therefore, we're all part of the solution. And we don't have to be at 100%. We start moving in the direction that we want to go. That's all we have to do. We don't, if it was perfect, we wouldn't, if we could just manifest it with an idea, then we'd have a shark or a rhinoceros in our room the second we thought about it. Ah! You know, but the manifestation principle works. Thought, word, action, manifest in the flesh. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So once we're clear on that, we speak it into existence. We get the ideas. We speak it into existence. You want to know how the gift economy is going to work? Go up to Burning Man. Oh, well, they still use money up there, and there's corporate sponsors up there and stuff like that right now. Okay, that's fine. But for the most part, that principle was started out. I still don't think there's that much money involved. Most of the ticket price goes into the cleanup of the garbage. So um, the fact of the matter is, is the gift economy exists. The permaculture exists. The, you know, spring water exists. The world, um, um, you know, being able to clean itself, the human being body being able to clean itself already exists. We just have to align with those principles. We've aligned with the opposite of it. Now it's just time to flip that script over. The human beings are the problem. Therefore, the human beings are the solution. We're 100% of the whole. So we've got to change the dark manifestations that are inside of us, basically. I love the way you put that, um, that by being part of the problem, we are also going to be part of the solution or are part of the solution. That's absolutely brilliant. There's a brilliance in there, man. I'd like to at some point see where that develops for you with, well, with your teachings. And we can do part two at any time. I think, you know, we talked on a lot of, you know, really deep subjects. And, I, you know, I don't know if this will come off well now, but or if you edit this in the future, you know, my objective is to take people with me. Sometimes I talk about an understanding that people can't even fathom and the things that I say undermines their worldview. And if you want to get people at the root chakra and, and you know, start dismantling their money, that's safety and security. When people have to rethink that, that can be very stressful just for me talking about this. So my objective is to, is to bring people along on this conversation. Is that not the quantum shift, though, to draw, to get rid of some of these blood dollars and not be so damn dependent on it, to get rid of some of this blood oil and not be so damn dependent on it? Doesn't it take some proaction, some proactivity here? Uh, absolutely. You know, you mentioned that vaccine, um, the health freedom rally, was, which is what it was. I don't teach with a lot of fire and brimstone. I, I do, but I don't. But I, I try to shy away from that because that doesn't take people with you. However, they were up there this morning, you know, Friday night going, this is 4th of July weekend, this is about liberty, this is about freedom, you know, uh, uh, land of the free, home of the brave. You know, this is, you know, independence, sovereignty. And so this is what that represents this weekend. And it's time to act, he was calling out the media, Del Bigtree, the producer was calling out the media, report on this stuff. Just don't film it, run it on the TV. You know, pharmaceutical companies, you know, dominate the media. 75% of advertising is pharmaceutical drugs. So the fact of the matter is, 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 you know, it's time to activate consciousness to a certain level. But again, that's the yin and yang. You've got, you've got to do this little balancing trick you know, to bring people along, but also, hey, it's time to wake up. you got a responsibility. You're a mother, you're a father, you're a man, you're a woman. What are you doing with your maternal instinct? What are you doing as a man standing up for injustices? And so, so. Have you seen the way, uh, the way seer manifesto? It's, it was a video that was viral years ago. Love well, it. One of the uh, lines or lyrics in that is to comfort the disturbed such as those homeless people and the veterans that you talked about to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable, you know, that's good. Anyway. Hey, look, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. Uh, so hold on. All right. We'll pause. Just, we'll pause this for a second. We'll be right back. Awesome. And then we'll finish up with the Zen 10. Okay.
So for those of you who are tuning in, man, this has been a great discussion with Mr. Troy Casey. We're not done yet. Uh, taking a little hiatus for a moment or two. We're going to pick back up with the Zen 10 and be finished, but we've touched on a lot of amazing subjects here today. Um, the, the dudes definitely presented us with some great balance, man, on how to uh, meet the challenge in a very positive way. We've gone well outside of the concepts of just physical fitness here. We've talked about spiritual fitness, psychological fitness. Uh, uh, talked about, uh, he's got some great products. You can find his stuff on uh, hashtag ripped at 50. You can also Google uh, certified health nut and find out more about uh, some of the wheatgrass and the other products he has for detoxification. Uh, we talked a little bit about Bucky Fuller and some great concepts there. I want to mention that Bucky Fuller developed his geodesic dome just down the road from where I am, down at uh, what used to be known as the Black Mountain College area. That's Lake Eden, right in between these beautiful twin lakes below Mount Mitchell and the Blue Ridge Parkway. And uh, there's an amazing event there twice a year, and once in spring in May and once in fall in October. It's called the Lake Eden Arts Festival. I highly recommend tuning into that and checking that out eclectic world music and just a great community of people people down there and um let's get uh, let's see it looks like troy's coming back into the room uh, i love plants this is some high grade shiwaji you ever try this liquid resin stuff no man what what is that <laughs> it's primordial goo it's like prehistoric primordial dirt that oozes out of the Himalayans or something. It's incredible. It's real. It's like a, it's like a tar. Oh, nice. And it's, uh, they call it the breaker of weakness. I think it's Ayurvedic. Okay. The Indians use it. Um, I can see you put the big smile on your face, man. So well, there's, there's, there's grades of it. And this is, this is the resin. This is the, the, the highest grade. It gets you. You know, I like plants because they make you feel good. I love that, man. This dude's activating today. Well, uh, we're back with Troy Casey, hashtag ripped it 50 and certified health nut. Um, Troy, I wrap these sessions up with what I call the Zen 10. It's a standard 10 questions I ask all of my guests. And at some point, I'm just going to edit in like, answer to answer to answer on the same question from different guests. It also gives us, you and I both, a chance and your friends to come back and review this stuff at some other time. So let's uh, let's start on the Zen 10, dude. You ready? Sweet. Yeah. Number one, Troy, what is your favorite color? Purple. I love it, man. Color of royalty, dude. Nice. Troy, if you could not be where you are today, where would you be? I like South America. I like uh, Ecuador, Vilcabamba. I like I like Peru. But you know something? I really like the United States, and I really like the City of Angels, which is where I'm at. I, my objective is to clean this planet up, clean the oceans, so it's a it's a beautiful place again. Um, I really like California all the way around. Clean up the sky as well. Uh, Northern California, Yosemite. I really love California. California is home for me. So if it, was, if it was California and it wasn't L.A., I would say uh, Laguna Beach if it's Southern California, and I would say uh, Marin County, um, probably uh, Ross or uh, Mill, Mill Valley or uh, Tiburon. I would say probably Tiburon. Uh, otherwise, otherwise uh, South America for its pristine environment in Ecuador and close to the Amazon. Um, A lot of people have been hanging out down at that lake in Guatemala, uh, At Atitlan. Yeah, that's a sacred place as well. I I, ha I haven't heard that, but uh, good, good. You know, that's a little closer. I, I like that. I like Latin America. I really like Latin America. Cool, man. And in Cali, do you ever get up to like Big Sur? Uh, I do. I've been to Esalen many times, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I haven't been up in a while. Having two young kids, you got to be strategic in your travels. I took them out camping quite a bit uh, a couple of years ago. We've done Yosemite a few times, and 
Sedona and Grand Canyon and uh, Tahoe. So um, this is a beautiful and diverse country that we live in, isn't it? And the world's great. I just did Stonehenge when I was in the UK a couple weeks ago and yep. uh, Glastonbury tour. And uh, I suggested you go up to Glastonbury tour. That's a power. That was you. That was you. Well, what that, happened? Isn't that a powerful place, dude? Way. And I did the meditation inside the tour and yep. I could feel my dome. I just dropped in, boom, right away. There was nobody in there and, and I could just feel my dome go off. Like sometimes when I was in ayahuasca, that would happen and the consciousness would just go. <laughs> so I, that's a trip that you recommended it because you recommended it. And I was like, what's that? And then someone else recommended it. And then the third time came up and I was like, I'm there. Nice, man. Things come in threes, don't they? I, yeah, I noticed. Okay, so I was watching your live feed, and I saw that you were over there in Britain, and I was like, this dude's got to go check out the tour. Uh, Glastonbury itself, the little town, is amazing. But but going up that hill, that ancient relic up there, man, Did you the history on that, It's it's been built and rebuilt for at least 6,000 years or more. And there probably used to be some type of ice bridge between the top of that hill and, like, uh, other parts of the of like the world because that was all flooded for a time and probably only that hill sat above uh, that water level the ocean level that's right and then um didn't the uh the church didn't they uh bury or take over the abbey the abbey inside glastonbury wasn't that a very special place it's behind the high street yeah i think i think you're correct about that man but what a there's trip. A of, there's a lot of, I mean, that's the, the story of Excalibur. That's Avalon. That's King Arthur. So, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a very special place. Totally. And the, everybody in that town looked like either a warlock or a fairy. I mean, I don't know about what you saw, man, but everybody in that town was so turned on to like a totally different realm. Yeah. And all the little shop owners and people in there. I still have some beautiful um, souvenirs from that area, man. Thanks for going there. Thanks for checking that out. What a powerful spot. My experience up there was I was up there on uh, British Mother's Day with my gorgeous British redheaded girlfriend. And this dude who looked like the guy from the cover of um, Led Zeppelin 4, who had like this, the bundle of sticks on his back, came up to me in that, in that monument and said, do you want to do some DMT? And I, looked, and I looked at my girlfriend and I said, man, yes, I do. But if I do it, we are not going to make it to your mom's Mother's Day event. And as it was, uh, we, we were a little bit late. And you know how some of the British are. They, they, she was a stickler for that. And I don't think I made a good impression on her mother. But anyway, <laughs> it was an awesome time. And the one to go back, man, I would totally do some DMT in that tour. Yeah, how late were you? Because DMT is a powerful experience, and then to go walk into some negativity. I so, didn't do it. I didn't do the DMT. Oh, you didn't do it. I passed yeah. on it, man. But to go back, knowing yeah. what I now know, I would have totally sat down with that dude from Led Zeppelin 4 cover and do the DMT, man. Uh, but anyway, what a brilliant place that is. Okay, let's not get too – let me not digress too much. Can you read to us either the last text you sent or show us the last photo you took on your phone? Oh my god. <sighs> okay, the last text I sent. The last photo will be better because oh sh shit! She got so <laughs> You gotta show it to us. Oh my god. Fucking real, that's real funny. people live, keeping it real, man. <laughs> that's fucking funny and powerful. Oh my god, that's so funny. Can you see it? Yeah, it's uh looks like a little mason jar of something. You see the light? Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it down here a little bit. What's better. going on with that? See it better? So that's a that's uh that's that's uh, American made ayahuasca from ha Hawaii. Wow, cool! My 
Yeah, I was over at my friend's house last night and they're medicine people. And uh, I normally don't have um, ayahuasca. Normally I just drink in the Amazon. Ayahuasca is an amazing liver detoxifier. So you can take a teaspoon a day to help cleanse your body out. And all the, it's not psychoactive on that level. However, all the DNA upgrades, the, the, the materials of the plant go in through your nervous system where you hold your beliefs and it's going to do its own system defrag. So um, whether it's a micro dose or a macro dose. And so uh, I asked my friend for a little bit. I think, I think it's uh, fairly um, expensive. I think it's $700 a quart. And so, but Terrence McKenna brought the vine out to Hawaii many years ago and it's been growing on Hawaii ever since. And so, uh, so that's pretty profound. That says a lot because uh, I love ayahuasca. Ayahuasca was a big part of my awakening. I worked in the Amazon. I promoted the Shipipo. I promoted the herbal medicine. Uh, that's what got me environmentally activated. It's so friggin' funny that my last picture was a bottle of ayahuasca. Alignment, man. Staying in alignment. I love it. Troy, if you had to change one thing about yourself, what is the one thing that you would change? Well, I think the answer to that is ultimately nothing. I think I have a sole contract of my own awakening. Um, the things I'm working on spiritually, mentally, kind of emotionally is really my detachment on outcomes because, and really stepping more into the flow, um, being, you know, in the present moment, I have my own anxious thoughts, um, and I get caught into my own, uh, uh, anger patterns. And so always upgrading and evolving that peace and harmony is a big mon mantra of mine. My intentions are usually peace and harmony. Um, so really just upgrading my own mental and emotional um, life and spiritually just letting go of the old ways, the mental constructs. I've got to get angry at this. This pisses me off. This is stressful. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I change is more and more harmony more sage wisdom, more Obi-Wan Kenobi. I like what you just said, sage. Use, use some of that sage, man. That was just been uh, medic, uh, shown, shown scientifically to detoxify the air, like as a kind of a, a antiseptic to the air. And I also noticed that a lady got arrested lighting some sage at a political rally, outdoor political rally. Anyway, I wish you a lot of love and luck and light along those, that manner of uh, processing that and, and manifesting that. Troy, question number five. What did you eat for dinner last night? Oh, I had an amazing dinner by the same friends. Um, so it was farmer direct, organic, garden grown. We had squash, fig chutney, um, cultured vegetables. It was like a sauerkraut kind of pink cabbage kind of really delicious thing with some kombucha and uh organic duck and uh raw butter and high quality sea salt and uh and then for dessert we had some kind of non-dairy and coconut yogurt and some kind of chocolate pudding activation kind of i mean it was all the highest quality amazing you know, kale, sal kale and strawberry salad. Uh, it was just great. So very super clean, super high vibe food. Y'all know how to do it in California, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> and that makes it worth the 3,500 mile trip for me, man. Uh, well, let me stop you there for a second because you said something about you missed the Silicon Valley. You know, this neighborhood is Silicon Beach right now. Yeah. You know, you may want to think with all your, because because entertainment and technology is merging. So all the tech companies are here. There's a lot of money, joint venture capitalists, people trying to build apps next level and stuff. Google's here. So you may want to consider moving out here because this is, this is a bit of a hotbed right now. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. And I am receiving that. And I will definitely process that and seriously consider that. I, I do feel and sense that there's a, a change coming as far as geographically for me. It is hard to pry me out of my micro home existence in the Pisgah National Forest with a beautiful waterfall on my property, bear, two kinds of fox, the gray fox and the red fox, bobcat, uh, turkey. But I do sense that there's a change coming. I know that that mountain has been there for millions of years and will continue to be there for millions of years. And it's time for me to, to get out and and move around a bit. So I'll be totally open to what you just suggested. And I very much thank you and appreciate that compliment for even mentioning that to me. Troy, what is the greatest pleasure you have ever experienced in your human experience so far? Well, I would have to say the sexual Kung Fu with my wife is pretty friggin' amazing. My, my objective is to get our stress levels down a little bit lower and, and, and pump the, uh, um, the sexual exploration up higher. So uh, I would say that. And then my son was born in water, both my children's birth. I mean, that's – so that's one and two. Awesome. Great answers, man. Great answers. I want to counter this. What has been the – worst pain that you've ever felt in this physical experience? Well, you know, I think there's childhood trauma is normal. It's part of the separation process. Um, and I think just being homeless as a kid, I think that there's no victims. So the positivity in being homeless as a kid and losing your family and not really having a home to go home to um, that has been not only, and here's the perfect yin yang, it's probably been one of the most heartbreaking elements for me, but it's also helped me in my spiritual journey of opening my heart, of um, having the anger and the problems come up from that to be my spiritual fodder in later life. Um, so I, I think, you know, that pain probably has stayed with me, uh, the longest and I'm very grateful for my upbringing because, uh, I wouldn't be the person I am today without that upbringing. However, it's pretty heartbreaking. I think when you're, when you're young and you're running away from home and, um, and then you eventually you're on your own and, and there isn't really a place to go home to no matter what. So, um, yeah. So there are other people right now experiencing what you experienced. They're not our age. They're 14, they're 12, <clears throat> they're 10, they're 15, 16, 17. <clears throat> Let me get a little water. <clears throat> Is there anything that you can share with, with those kids <clears throat> from your own experience that will help them through that? Um, yeah. Well, what would you say to yourself, knowing what you know now, to that 14-year-old boy who was on the streets? What would you say to yourself, besides putting your arms around that child and hugging and loving that child? You know, that's, that's a good question because at that time, I don't think I, I could actually listen to anyone. So, but, you know, who helped me at that time? Was anybody that would listen to me or, you know, give me the right amount of time or whatever nurturing? So I would have to say I would talk to the human being and, you know, build some form of rapport so that we can have a bridge into that consciousness because I've worked with at-risk youth since then, incarcerated youth. I've done, I did an event at Esalen with a group of kids. Um, and the guard is up. So the street kids, they have a guard up. So to get into it, um, you know, you, you, you have to be a whole person. So I would just really engage with the human being, see where they're at, see, make the connection, with however that would work out, and see if they're, they're, they're open. I think just being present with somebody like that 
is enough itself. And I, I do that when I can with some of the homeless, you know, when I can. Some people are flat out crazy and I don't have a lot of energy for that. Um, however, if I give money to someone who's homeless, I engage them in a conversation, see what they're up to, you know, hear their pain. Um, so, you know, that's what you can do is just be present with people. How do we drop that guard? Well, the guard's there for a reason, right? The ego's there for a reason. The New Age community, you know, wants, the yoga community wants to get rid of the ego. The ego is there to help us survive in the physical world. It's balance of, of the two. So how do we drop the guard? Well, you've got to look at your life and you've got to choose. So when I was a homeless kid dealing drugs and stuff, I realized then that I'm not just going to shrivel up underneath a rock and die so you eventually got to carry on and then eventually as I started to clean up my life I used to I used to steal and do criminal activity as I started to, to clean up my life you just keep asking yourself who you want to be who you want to be in relationship to the world and then you are your own self-correcting internal guidance system and the evolution of of that can begin and continue to come online. Most people, if they get locked up in prison or they lose a loved one, um, they can get more in touch with the God presence. They can have a near-death experience, um, a higher level of life. And so I did get locked up when I was incarcerated as a youth. And I think it helped me respect my freedom more. Beautiful. I like what you said. I like everything that you said there, but I really like what you said about asking yourself, who do I want to become? That's a powerful tool. Very powerful tool. <clears throat> I think we can all learn from that. Troy, tell me about your best friend. <laughs> well, my best friend <laughs> is someone very near and dear to my heart. And so my best friend would be myself, ultimately. Um, and sometimes he's not a great friend. <laughs> you know, we've got all our little negative self-talk and, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I try and do the best thing I can for, for myself and have some kind of positive self-talk journey to self-love, take care of myself. You know, I wake up, you know, I need a stretch or I need some water, you know, I got to take care of the kids. I got duties to do, but ultimately I got to eventually take care of myself. I'm going to be good for the kids and, and, and my wife. So. I've learned to become my own best friend. I'm a very big social butterfly, but I don't hang out with a lot of people. I don't have a lot of friends. So the, the other component of that would just be my wife, would be my wife and, and, and children. I mean, I'm, I'm with them as much as humanly possible. Well, they're all lucky to have you. You're, you're, you're a totally righteous dude. Um, Troy, are there any rituals that you partake in like every day, either when you wake up or go to sleep or throughout the day? Are there, is there any rituals that you const that you want to share with us that you constantly do? Yes. I, uh, drink water. I breathe as deeply as I can. And when I catch myself in emotional patterns or my scalenes are needing some stretching, I force myself to, to be conscious of my breath and breathe deeper or go to exercise. I uh, feed myself uh, organic food, and uh, and I sleep at a uh, hour that's aligned with my endocrine system and the celestial bodies, circadian rhythms. So these are the rituals that I do. Uh, I move my body every day too. So um, those are for sure rituals. And uh, my meditation's not uh, 100% these days, or my Tai Chi, but uh, but you know what? I do the fundamentals, and that's, you know, I try and clear my negative thoughts and connect with what I'm grateful for, and, and uh, those are my rituals. I kick ass on social media as much as possible, the little addicting element that it is. Um, but those are my daily rituals. Does that make sense? Totally, man. Thanks. Uh, what time do you go to sleep in your circadian rhythm? What time is that? 
Uh, 10 is optimal, so that's my target. So uh, before, if I can, there's just a lot of stuff to be done. And uh, after the children go to sleep, I get a, some stuff done there. And then because I wake up, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, they're ready to go. Something needs to be done. So I need to get good sleep. I, and sleep's very important. So 10 is the target. Beautiful. <clears throat> Troy, tell us one thing that you will do after this interview in the next 24 hours. There's one thing that you're guaranteed to do. Ride my bicycle and go to the beach. Beautiful, man. I love it. Um, we're down to the last two questions. And, and let, me just, let me just say on that note, riding my bicycle is a big deal for me. Riding my bicycle is what makes me happy. And what's, what moves my body, maybe with my shirt off, kind of socializing from the street. Woo! You know, who, what human beings are out here, you know, go ride on the boardwalk. You know, for me, that's, that's my happiness. That makes me feel good. And so riding my bike is up there with the color, the color purple. It's just, it's there. Nice, man. I just had this vision of this butter, this big butterfly on a bicycle. Uh, where do you go down to? Uh, uh, yeah, what beach do you go down to? I live on Santa Monica. Venice is a little seedy, especially on the weekend, a holiday weekend like this. Um, and it's probably too crowded. But just get out. I live in Santa Monica, so just getting outside of my house on my bicycle is good enough. Muscle Beach is right down the street from my house, so I usually go over there. Cool. If I'm not mistaken, that bike path goes all the way up to like Santa Barbara, doesn't it? Uh, no, it actually ends at Will Rogers. So it's seven and a half miles long. Okay. If you go back and forth, three and a half, three and a half miles or seven miles, something like that. So, um, so I, li I live kind of right in the middle. I'll go to Venice on a lesser congested day. Otherwise, I'll go the, the opposite direction. So awesome, man. It's a long bike path. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, the very last question. Uh, well, the second to last. Why, why are you here? To share my love. To be. To share my gifts. To share whatever fractional element of unconditional love I am. And that includes the good, the bad, and the ugly of Troy Casey. So, you know, just be, um, share my love. I like utilizing my human experience for activating the God consciousness with inside of myself and see what I can create, what beautiful things I can create. Nice, man. Thanks for sharing your love with us here today. I have a bonus question that I give everybody. Um, do you have one question for me? Yes. What is your mission and vision in the elevator speech of 30 seconds or one sentence? To turn people on to their highest self, man. Um, my life, I feel, has already been completed. I feel like this is a gift for me to be back in the physical body and be part of this journey. And to do, guide people's sacred Kundalini energy back into themselves so that they're replenishing themselves so that regardless of where they are and what they distribute, because there's so many opportunities for healing, love, and light out there. I want them to be empowered by themselves and by their own process. I think that's like the battery keeping itself kind of on full peak. And if I can help people in that 30 second elevator speech and I, I for everybody it's different because there's a different element and everybody's dialed into a different thing. But if I can just give people that sacred eye contact and meet with them for a moment and let them know that number one, everything's okay, man, the good, the bad and the ugly, it's all all right. And number two, <clears throat> To, to show them a little bit of technique on how to replenish and identify and recognize themselves. And by recognizing themselves, and I know I've gone outside of my 30 seconds here, but 
recognizing themselves is not in this the physical body necessarily it's, it's not only confined to the physical body or our mental state or what our jobs are or what we drive or our families or anything like that it's recognizing that pure love and light mana that i i know not in my head but in my heart i know is inside each and every one of us from the worst hitler to the best gandhi and everybody in between and being able to make love to people like that for 30 seconds in an elevator my god man what a what a beautiful gift that is for me to help people tune in and turn on to themselves man and the beauty and power of themselves i know that you do that and you teach and preach those techniques and tactics through through all the modalities that you've mentioned today well, I like I like what you said earlier, and to tie that all together, you know, your mission and vision, because yeah, we're totally aligned. But you're utilizing the media and technology, which is part of your own mastery, advertising and marketing, to bring these messages. And I think that's great. That's everything that we just talked about. It is, and to me, you know, that advertising and technology is kind of like a necessary evil. But I am willing to sacrifice every finger every hair on my head, every molecule in my body to promote what we just mentioned, that high level of self-consciousness and self-awareness. And it's not about, it's about people really seeing that golden love and light inside of themselves, man. I know it's there, you know it's there. They, on a molecular level, every single one of us knows it's there. So I hope that we can hug each other a little more, love each other a little more, feed each other a little more, like that great dinner that you had last night fucking organic duck i mean are you kidding me man um and let's carry on in this mission that's all there is that's what we're here for man what else is there you know that's that's, that's correct that's correct so thank you so much troy casey for sharing your love and light with us today uh we didn't talk much about your beautiful family you mentioned them a few times that's usually a fairly intimate subject and it would, could, would have taken us off, off path from where we are. But I want to say, man, I know your family is very lucky and blessed to have you as a part of it. I know that you're very lucky and blessed to have them. I also have children and, you know, relationships and stuff like that. <clears throat> Carry on with your great work. I want to let people know where they can find you one more time. I know that it's at hashtag ripped at 50. I know they can also find you at certified health nut. Can you give us a few more uh, beacons of how to find you? Yeah, certified, certifiedhealthnut.com, Certified Health Nut, YouTube, Certified Health Nut, Facebook, Certified Health Nut, Instagram, um, and then we've got uh, workingwithtroy.com. So that's workingwithtroy.com um, for my business website. And certifiedhealthnut.com has access to all my videos and stuff. and and uh, social media is where I'm running most of everything right now. And so um, come and see me live whenever I make an announcement. And um, yeah, just, you know, turn on, tune in, tune in, turn on. Absolutely, man. I hope more people out there will be tuning in and turning on to you, Troy Casey. If you ever get out to Asheville, I want you to know there's a hell of an audience waiting and very receptive to your message out here. I'm going to be turning them on to that a little bit more. You've been incredibly generous with your time and energy and your wisdom and your life experiences experiences with us here today. This has been another episode of Real People Live. We kept it real today. Troy, I'm going to turn the broadcast off, but I'm going to stay online with you for just a couple seconds, all right? Cool. Thanks a lot, folks. This has been Troy Casey, the Certified Health Nut. Awesome, dude.